I'll tell you one. All right, good evening. This is Pete Wickard and Seth Davis, and this is The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction, and it is December, what, Seth? Uh, 13th. Of 2014. <laughs> so it's 12, 13, 14. Oh, whoa, really? Oh, whoa. Weird. I didn't think about that. Didn't think that about was that. my point. Isn't that kind of a weird? Of a day. Yeah, of a day. Someone should play that lotto ticket number. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, man, uh, it's a good talking to you. Uh, your voice sounds like it's coming in clear. Uh, so how about you uh, enlighten us on some, some news that caught your attention? Okay, right? well, uh, okay. after, uh, I, I, after, I, I, after I, I start this here, uh, this I here, really uh, I'd really like to hear what you were telling me before there, uh, and I'm sure the audience would too, about uh, attempting to blow up the moon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's from Yahoo, and um, Yahoo last night just had it up right next to some like Kim Kardashian article that uh, in the 1950s they contemplated uh, setting a nuke off in the, on the moon, <laughs> like literally, like the moon landing and then... After that, boom. Uh, that's about as yep. much as they said. They yep. didn't seem to have a problem with it. <laughs> it was more or less like, well, we chose not to do this. The well, fact that they're think thinking of that. that. Willing to, to, to blow up, to blow up the moon, moon for whatever reason. For whatever reason as far as thinking there's some sort of strategic, strategic, strategic advantage that one block, one would, block have would have against the other there. there. It's, it's crazy. It's asinine because, it's asinine it, would because it would kill pretty much everybody, pretty much everybody on Earth. Yeah. But they were but they considering, considering doing that, and whoever the government can, can logically consider, consider that because they have the manpower and the resources to do so. Uh, nobody. <laughs> yeah. Nobody else. Yeah. But, yeah, man, honest to God, uh, it's been been a crazy week. So, uh, what about on your end? Uh, here, uh, I won't get into it as far as uh, some local news. But, uh, but uh, starting out with this news coming from uh, uh, December eighth. Uh, excuse December me, there, uh, twenty fourteen. Uh, uh, what is the headline here? The huge LA plane being investigated as a criminal fire. The huge LA fire that engulfed a apartment tower over an area the size of a city block. All the places of this magnitude are always treated as criminal fires. It's very rare for an entire building to be engulfed at once. Captain Jamie or Jaime Moore of Los Angeles, or told Los Angeles, there may have been some foul play. Arson investigators are going to examine the building and financial records. Dogs trained to sniff out accelerants were also at the scene. Flames could be seen for miles uh, from the fire that broke out in the Da Vinci apartment complex at about 1.20 a.m. Fire closed freeways and roads, but just windows of nearby buildings to the freeway signs. Looked like a bomb that just exploded, so I can't tell a uh, fire captain, uh, Rick Godinez. Wow. Wow. So, it's pretty crazy, man. It's pretty crazy, man. It's a pretty damn big fire. Pretty damn big fire. And, I, and we're working on that, actually. Soon we... we are going to probably be able to get the chance to show you that fire. I'm going to see if I could uh, do this with uh, right now, but keep going, Seth. I'm going to try to look up that article. Okay. okay. Uh, moving, moving on, on here, here uh, uh, Daily Caller. This is Obama, Obama makes that Bible verse to justify that uh, information power. Oh, my God. So now he's officially gone nuts. Uh, officially, I think he had gone nuts quite a while ago when he decided he could just, you know, well, torture and kidnap he, anybody he wanted at his own whim. He thinks he's a god now? I mean... Uh, no, no, no. It's just here. The man, the man, the man, the man, the man, the Quote, a washpot never boiled. Quote, don't take any wooden nickels. Quote, a stitch uh, in time saves nine. Quote, end quote. We all remember these powerful words from the Bible, don't we? Well, well, at least President Barack Obama, Obama does. does. He said the following in Nashville, Tennessee, Tennessee uh, yesterday while ineptly defending his completely unconstitutional am executive amnesty. Yeah. Quote, 
I, I think the good book says don't throw stones, stones at glass, glass houses. houses. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's a 50 cent song, Mr. President. That's like an old, uh, 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 like, like just proverb, like folk wisdom proverb type of thing. He's just, he's an asshole and he knows that he's adding this stuff in. He's an asshole and he knows that he's adding this stuff in. But go on here. This is a new level of dishonestism. Even for Obama, uh, shut up and, and let him do whatever, whatever he wants, because God, God said so. Or okay, maybe oh, God, God didn't really say so, but still, so, shut, but still up. shut up. But I suppose it's but no suppose surprise. Uh, he's uh, made it. Uh, he makes yeah. up stuff that isn't in the Constitution all the time. He uh, why not make up stuff that isn't in the Bible? It's all the same. Yeah. Those guys are dead. He has a lot of power. It's power. Right. He's he's here for I, I used to think it was. was uh, uh, I used to think he said this kind of stuff to gaslight us, to make us question our very perceptions of reality. That's not it. He's just, he's just a liar, and he's just particularly good at it. Uh, uh, the only people in that school are left that I repeat myself. That I repeat that myself. I was a DC trawler by Jason Howerton. I mean, honestly, President... Or, no, sorry, that was by Jim Treacher. I mean, he has already, like, gone way too far with his executive powers. Like... And now to, to try to bring religion, and and, and he's like it, admitted it. Well, he wanted to be able to do it the same way George W. Bush, Bush was exactly. able to do it right after 9 11. Like but, a holy crusade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You got, you got it. That's exactly what I was just going to bring up. It seems like the same, same old, same old. Bring God. Like God should favor America. America's killed more people than anyone in the world. You know, agreed. agreed. And, and that's that's the thing people need to wake up to is uh, <laughs> you better uh, better start realizing America's not what you really think it is. It's uh, we've been killing people for for a long, long time now. Long and, time. And we're they're killing our citizens. So if you yeah. count that, I mean, we're like the Antichrist. What to be honest, man, China and Russia, China and Russia do a pretty Russia good job at competing job there. Uh, the United States and England have uh, uh, really, yeah. really got to just take the cake, man. Yeah, and I'll give you that, but in the time that we've had a, a country <laughs> compared to them, uh, I think that the stats would show that it's staggering, you know, yeah. That, yeah. That, that the difference is just... Crazy. I know Mao Zedong is up there, but well, I think we're even. Well, and, the communist, uh, to be honest, the communist, uh, because technically a lot of those people weren't uh, Russian or whatever. They got killed by the Russians. Or Russians or it doesn't Russians, mean that they didn't have a ton have of their own citizens, of millions and millions of people that weren't worked to death in slave camps and literally just shot in some cases. Or starved to death, whatever. Or starved to death. Yeah, you're right. It's just a lot of those people that uh, are the, the pro-Russian mind would say, well, technically, a lot, a lot of, of those people were Russians. Like, you're right. They were members of the former USSR. So. That's, great. That's great. You know what I wish I could figure out? Um, uh, basically how we uh, did it yeah. last time where it yeah. switched. Oh, it's because we're using yep. the phone line. Manually switching between each other. So when I'm talking now, I'll talk like I'll click like you. So we don't. We lost the luxury of the robot that helped <laughs> us do that last time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I've been um, pretty much, you know, working with uh, greatest expectations. I wanted to bring that up quickly, and uh, pretty much. It's, uh, 150 bucks for the classes. It's an inch and peat promo code. You get a special deal off that $150. And uh, the number to call if any, you know, anyone is interested, I think you should jump on them. You can't find a deal better in the country. And it is 1773-205-8100. And it's, remember, it's the greatest greatest expectations firearm concealed carry training I just did it myself they're great people and in two days you'll be shooting 
<laughs> right on. I thought that was cool. I thought I had to like be in training for like a month or something. No, next day, two days, you're done. It's nice and easy, quick. You get, uh, you know, they help you with the the paperwork and the 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 pictures. They're really generous people there, and I would suggest look it up. And I just made a Facebook page, so on the top search part, uh, put uh, greatest expectations. I'll pop it right up. Use promo code Pete or the truth is stranger than fiction to receive an additional bonus. I had to plug that like Alex Jones said, says we have to fund the operation and in order to help fund us you got to go and get your concealed carry training. That's the heck of a thing to, to support the show and to just support yourself there. Yeah, it's a start, man, you know, and it, things are getting crazy hosting the, the 45th Ward Alderman debates. Uh, I just got invited to like a private party with the judges and the aldermen, and, and, well, Pete, well, Pete, and I'm starting to get in the inner circle here now. Well, we're going to hope that, well, uh, hope that uh, this uh, alderman election is not going to be an aldermanic war and, like, uh, you know, like, you was going to die there in Chicago. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, dude. The one guy, uh, Gerardo, he uh, is like a, a, a pawn for Rahm Emanuel. And the other guy, Arena, uh, he is like the rebel. And uh, I'm gonna, you know, obviously do my job and and ask fair questions to both, you know, candidates. Yeah. But uh, yeah. the the Gerardo guy's still sell, uh, suing, you know, Arena for winning last election, and he had uh, a lot of things he did like where he sold out our parking meters and yeah. you know there's, uh, but I haven't seen one sign for Arena, and I've seen like a hundred signs for the other guy. Yep. Yep. That's usually that's how we'll get there, just because they have the time to actually earn money to pay people to go out and put all this shit all over the place. I mean, yeah. you mean, how many people did you see with uh, the John McCain, Claire Palin signs, or Mitt Romney signs, or there's some little Obama signs there, uh, versus the false stickers? None. <laughs> You know, yeah, exactly. Like, dude, and the the funniest thing is, I was wearing my "Come and Take It" shirt Joe Biggs gave me, and my Moan Lobby hat, and yeah. uh, Infowars, and he like, I thought he would not accept me, you know, because of that fact. But he's playing the role of independent, and uh, I'm not sure whether that's accurate. I think you would uh, have to say he's more of a Democrat given his ties to Emmanuel, you know, so yeah. uh, I think yeah. that's why I was chosen is because I, I, you and I are focusing on world issues. I got a lot more in my mind than the 45th Ward, you know, so yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. do the best I can, but it's it's a great opportunity and it goes to show, look at uh, how far we're, we've come, man, to, they came up and asked Pete Wickard, man. <laughs> It's crazy. Well, think about that, Pete. You've been doing this since what? Like February? I've been working with you since like August. Yeah. 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 It seems like uh, seems like uh, only a few months, but man, it's it's been almost a year now. Yeah, shit's crazy, dude. I've been working with you for what? Almost six, well, six months now. Six months, yeah. If not a <laughs> little bit, if not like. Probably seven when we started communicating, and a lot of stuff you, yeah. we talked about, you know, triggered thoughts that I said on the show. So I'd say seven months, man. That's, and your your support. Think about that. Too. Think about that. Time flies, flies when you're working, man. Scraping by. Yeah. <laughs> Scraping by. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's one thing I gotta, you know, say to you, bro, is you you really bust your your ass, man. You know, and. I do what I do on this gotta one, man, because we, we have no options on, on this other than to to stick to it. Everybody else wants, wants to be able to, to go off and, and, you know, be like, you know, oh, if I don't mess with anybody else, I can just go live my own life and have my own little chunk of stuff carved out there and everything, but it just doesn't work like that, man. If you're not willing to fight for it, then you're going to get it taken away. That's life. Yeah. Yeah. Damn right. And the sad part is that our living standards, dude, I I drive to, like, 
the suburbs to go to the range, man. Yeah. You should see all the, the the businesses that are closing. Like I'm hearing yeah. about a recovering getting worse. I mean, it looked like it was sad. It was, that's the only thing. Well, it really think about how many people. Like, people uh, you uh, you probably get a ton of different arguments. You try and argue with somebody on the, the uh, market watch or somebody like that, or Financial Times of London or something. Uh, Think of it, those people literally will broadcast, people literally all, literally will broadcast all the And then people. all the little uh, uh, talking heads and uh, echo chamber people in college right now and their right economics now, bullshit economics degrees that they're getting are going to tell you that things have actually recovered and that we were in a recession. And it's like, it's, we're literally in a depression and it continued to be. Yeah, you're right. It never, it never, it never stopped. stopped. I don't, I don't get it. Just because gas prices are going down, but as we talked about before, our gas prices are going down, and our arch nemesis, right, uh, ISIS, there controls all these oil fields. Like, how is OPEC lowering the price of the oil? Wouldn't it be being jacked up? Jacked up. It's economic warfare yep. on Russia. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. And it's that's. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with yeah, us really, other than that, that it also has an inverse effect, 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 effect of like, uh, uh, what would you say, uh, making uh, people uh, complacent here. Yep, I agree, I agree, and the sad thing is people are just like, oh, so happy. Yep. Yeah, you know, like, we have, uh, we have our... Uh, extra money in our pocket. They don't realize like how much it's hurting the Russian people. Well, here's uh, something well, I find pretty uh, interesting. There, Pete, speaking of uh, the wonderful uh, standards of living uh, here in uh, uh, the great uh, civilized uh, West. Uh, uh, this is out of Russia uh, today. Of Hashtag Russia porn today. protest. Mass sitting straddles Parliament uh, Square to resist quote sexist porn laws. Oh, Right. Yeah, here, you want the details here, let's see, some 500 protesters will gather outside Parliament on Friday with yesterday to take part in a mass quote face-sitting to dem uh, demonstration against a uh, new draconian porn law in which it banned the acts largely associated with female pleasure. The protest will attract over 250 women sitting on men's faces after the act of face-sitting along with whipping female attendants and spanking and fisting. We're banned in online porn by audio, visual, uh, media relation in December. That, that's crazy, yeah, dude. Just like, oh, I, I like that. Just like, people have all this time and all this money. Uh, paying these people, uh, to people to go out there, or in there, some cases, people just go out there that will protest over that. But in terms of NSA spying, in terms of CIA torture, and MI6 torture, MI5 torture out there, uh, no, 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 no. Like, why, why would we give a shit about that? It's like you can take my guns, you can take my money, you can take my my like my pension, you can take my my wife and my kids, but don't take my porn. My wife and my kids, don't take my porn. It's disgusting. Hey Seth, yes sir. Open up the show. Open up the show and see us up here. Because I I just tried and I couldn't hear nothing. That would be pretty weird. That would be pretty weird. Let's see. <laughs> we might have to start over, which uh, wouldn't be a bad uh, thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we can do it. Okay. Live now. Live no. Live now. now. Live now. What do you mean it's live? It says yeah, live now. It's picking us up. Allegedly. We're 17 minutes. Can you hear it, though? Uh, can I hear it? Let me see. I don't know if it'll cause all sorts of weird feedback for me to do this, but. Who cares? Try it. Yep. Yep. Try it. yep. We're coming yep. completely yep. crystal clear. Okay. Cool. Totally cool. fine. Totally so, fine. Got that. We're about 18 minutes in right now. Uh, let's keep it going there. This is in more serious news. Uh, the war, uh, the war quote unquote, because they, they, they don't call it a war, war but it's but pretty much a war, war uh, between uh, Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan and Armenia, Armenia right now. Uh, uh, let's see, going with news.az, this is Azerbaijani news. Uh, quote, Armenians violate ceasefire. Armenian, that is uh, Friday, the 12th of December. Uh, uh, Armenian, uh, Armenian uh, armed forces violated ceasefire 47 times in different sections of the front line, 
uh, OXU, John EZ, reports with reference to the Defense Ministry that Armenian armed forces fired at Azerbaijani positions in nameless heights and uh, on nameless heights and Gushchiar <laughs> village in Gazak and uh, from their posts in Vozashen village of Izhavan, uh Voskovan village of the Noyem area. Ooh, uh, I'm of it. Armenia and the Azerbaijani positions in Alabelai, uh, village of Tavuz, and their posts in Moses and Igapar villages of Ur. In addition, Azerbaijani armed forces fired uh, from their posts near Duryark, Filibert village uh, uh, you just a bunch of names on there. The enemies of silence are tired. The retaliation fire is how it is. Because there's, they just go on to names. I name. love the, I love like, just how you pronounce these names because I wouldn't even give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, it, it got too ridiculous. I would have stuck with it, but they had like 40 names of all these different places that uh, Azerbaijan was firing back at the Armenians at, and allegedly that's how it ends. However, uh, the inverse of that is also this Friday, uh, yesterday, December 12th. This is out of Pan Armenian uh, Net, or .net, which is pretty interesting there. Uh, Armenian News says Azeris used mortar fire to shell Artsakh uh, territory on not on December 12th. Unprecedented ceasefire violations on the Azeri side were reported on the night of December 12th, the line of contract between Karbakh armed forces with mortar fire used to shell the Artsakh, or Artsakh territory, Armenian media reports. No loss on Armenian side are reported, with return fire on Armenian side, leaving several dead on our Azeri side. Uh, the NKR presidential spokesman, David Babayan, uh, confirmed reports of increased, increased ceasefire over the night. According to the NKR Defense Army Press Service, 204 instances of violations were registered, with over 220 shots being fired uh, for from mortars fired. And people are like, oh, it's not a war, but that just breaks out like every couple of nights there. Like, it's all normal. Yeah. Well, it is, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah unfortunately. Like, every day, uh, people in most countries, you know, wake up. They're in a war zone, and a lot of it has yeah. to do with us in Israel too. Unfortunately, man. Yeah. yeah, dude. Uh, here, just uh, Slo uh, Slavic news or Slovakia news. Uh, this is petrol price drop at the three-year low, and I just thought that was kind of the news what we were talking about earlier, as far as lower gas prices uh, around the West there, and how that's kind of. Being used as economic warfare against Russia right now. Yeah, it's all it is. It's all it is. And, and people act like, oh, they care so much. They lower yeah, the gas. No. And you know what else they're going to do? It's like a common trick. What they're going to do is they're going to basically uh, pretty much jack up the prices once again. And uh, they're going to slowly like drop them in the winter like they do. And then... Gradually, so right. Right. Not that they always yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, it, it, it's a way that they can gradually increase the prices to ridiculous levels, but never for long enough for people to fully break. And vice versa, the inverse there. It's it's just pushing the envelope a little bit further. They're kind of pulling back a little bit further. Forward, but it's exactly what they do. They push from everything. Yeah, you're right. And and sorry, people, if I'm like uh, like you know. Messing around, we uh, literally just got some new equipment, and uh, we got some some new ideas to improve the show. So we're uh, we're working on things here, and uh, the Truth Alliance Nightly News is going to be back, and we're trying to you know get our tech aspect down. So if there's a little few bumps in the road, we apologize. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's oh, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, definitely, definitely uh, Operation here. Let's see. Uh, what was is, that? Uh, I said it's uh, definitely a definitely type of operation here. It's out of Lithuanian news here. Dealt by the Lithuanian Tribune. By Elizabeth Bra out of Newsweek. Uh, earlier this month, experts convened 
and wrestles for a conference title in the second Cold War, he left question mark. Or even among the plethora of current uh, new Cold War themed events. Now, the organizer, Latvian M uh, member of parliament, Tatiana Zdanoka, uh, has been accused of being a Russian agent of influence, a spy. The Danoka, uh, who is also chair of the EU Russian Speakers Alliance, insists there is no truth to the allegations, adding to the accusation that uh, was part of a dirty, part of dirty trade operation against her at home, uh, from her at home by domestic opponents, a tactic familiar to the Cold War days, uh, to those who remember them. Yeah. In any event, the criminal investigation against her has now been closed. Latvia's DP intelligence uh, service says. Yeah, they say. <laughs> yep. Charming. Let's see. Right. Let's see. Going over here to uh, um, Bosnia, we got uh, uh, Sarajevo Times, Council of Europe, civilian victim of war in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, will trauma be the legacy of the younger generation? Uh, on the, this is uh, yesterday as well. On the occasion of the International Human Rights Day, the Council of Europe in Bosnia and Herzegovina organized two days ago uh, a panel discussion on civilian victims of war. Uh, the, the joint position on the issue of the civilian war in Bosnia and Herzegovina at the press conference was presented by the head of the Office of the Council of Europe uh, in BIH, uh, Mary Ann Hennessy, uh, British ambassador to the BIH, uh, Edward Ferguson, Charge Defar of the EU delegation of the BIH, uh, Renzo, the BDD. Uh, uh, that seems like too many D's there. There's like three D's in a row. Uh, that's, that's a lot of D's. Uh, yeah, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, Hennessy reminded that 20 years after the war, many of the visible stars had healed, some of which had claimed to renew, but little was done in conjunction with invisible stars, trauma, and many forms, which, unlike purely physical injuries, are accompanied by the use of being inherited by the indigenous generation. Quote, now is the time to recognize the common status of civilian war victims, uh, regardless of their place of residence or ethnicity, said Hennessy. She added that the time has come to build a broader coalition that should be a stronger advocate of adequate, effective reparation to social uh, address. Social, medical, psychological, economic, and financial advantage of individuals and families. Agreed. Oh, yeah. That's some pretty vicious stuff, man. Yeah. Some pretty vicious stuff, man. Yeah. Some pretty vicious stuff, man. Yeah, and um, got the graphic up. <laughs> so we're making strides, Seth. But yeah, that, that's that's <laughs> a sad story. Though. And I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, man, I don't know. One, one piece at a time, always. Man. I'm, uh, I'm playing the role of Danny today. And Pete Wicker <laughs> and Seth, which is quite a, quite a cast there, man. So Seth is actually mainly uh, he's captaining the boat today. I'll I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, I'm too. Hey man, we, you, hey, man, we, we do, do what we gotta go, bro. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna try to get you now. So okay. Uh, continuing uh, on, this continuing is the on, got okay. Rapcom Wyatt. Refuses to testify for his former Serb political master, Radovan Karadza. Serb Army Commander sends off his false teeth and dismisses UN War Crimes Tribunal as quote satanic court. Former Bosnian Serb Army Commander General Ratkin Wadik sent the United Nations Yugoslav War Crimes Tribunal and report testify as a defense witness for his former political master, Radovan Karadza. A courtroom reunion of the court alleged chief architects of Serb atrocities uh, during Bosnia's 1992-1994 lasted only about an hour. The United States would not answer former Bosnian Serb President Radzic's question, citing ill health and an unwillingness to risk incriminating himself. The brief hearing marks the first time the two men had been seen together publicly since the aftermath of the war, but Mladic's refusal to answer any questions meant it cast no new light on the conflict that left 100,000 people dead. Wow. That's well, you're continuing on. Well, Morales was uh, uh, to have been, been one of Brad Brad's six, uh, uh, last witnesses. Brad's, Brad's, Brad's attorney, attorney Peter Robinson, 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 the former Bosnian attorney, who was trying to testify in his own defense in February. Both Brad's and Morales disappeared for years after the guns fell silent in Bosnia and they attempted to evade extradition to face a trial in the Hague. Uh, Karadzic was captured in Serbia in 2008, disguised as a bearded new age hero, and Miladic was detained nearly three years later. Both, Both men are on trial separately for crimes, including genocide. 
both insist they're innocent, arguing that everything they did during their uh, during the war was intended to defend the Serb people. They faced life sentences if convicted. Vladik initially refused to testify, then said he would speak, which respects fetched his dentures from his cell. But with his false teeth and Vladik again refused to testify, and despite issuing a subpoena for Vladik to appear in court, judges would not compel him to give evidence. That's craziness. Yep. Like, that just gets, it shows you again that the rich are in a whole nother level than us. Oh, agree. You know? They, agree. And I think that, that also uh, had a bit there to do with, with uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, obviously. And yeah, that was still no pretty important. important. Yeah, yeah. So what else you got from your brother? Stuff, what else you got? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Albania uh, and NATO enhanced military cooperation. Well, that's just a just a, just a headline. There were CIA's brutal interrogation methods unacceptable. This is a foreign minister saying that. Let's see. A reason. dot com. This is a good one that we need to get into for a second. All torture is criminal under all circumstances. Really? Would you agree? Would you agree? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, let's see. If the allegation is CIA torture, torture reported true, true. Yeah, we have war criminals, perjurers, computer hackers, and thugs on the government payroll. payroll. It's by Andrew Napolitano on December 11th. When the head when of the CIA CIA's torture unit decided to destroy video tapes of his king's horrific work and immediately set in motion a series of events that led to the release. That led to the release this week of the most massive detailed documentation of unlawful behavior by high ranking government officials and intentional infliction of pain on non combatants by the United States government since the Civil War era. Here's the backstory. For one of the reasons, uh, one of the reasons repeatedly stated by President George W. Bush for the American invasion of Iraq in 2003 was the main torture room by Saddam Hussein. While making this very argument, Bush was secretly authorizing CIA agents to engage in similar unlawful behavior for similar purposes. Intelligence was determined. Bush now is credible when he claimed the administration adhered to federal and international legal standards. He knew he could make the, uh, he could make that claim because the torturers were sworn to secrecy, as were their congressional regulators. The CIA charter permits Congress to regulate the CIA in secret. Congress has established two secret congressional committees, one from the Senate and one from the House, to serve as monitors and regulators of CIA activities. The stated reason of the secrecy is to keep our enemies from knowing what the CIA is doing. The effect to the secrecy has been a muzzled Congress, lied to by a law-breaking rogue CIA officials until now. When the Senate Intelligence Staff learned that the video a federal crime the Justice Department declined to prosecute. Of course, they were current holders, as you know. You gotta be kidding me. And reported to Senator Diane Feinstein of California. Yeah. Yeah. She ordered the investigation to determine whether the CIA officials. I heard that. Yeah, she's acting like she's a conservative. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, she's acting like she's a conservative. No, that makes me sick, like how she's been Yeah, that they go to Feinstein knowing damn well that everything she's going to do with the rest of these people is going to be like a powder puff version of it. Yep. And look, you hear Hillary Clinton lately? She's talking like she's like uh, Alex Jones. Yep. Are they trying? They're trying. They're trying. They're trying. They're trying. She, she knows. Y'all, did the, you hear? Uh, y'all, how y'all doing down here in Kentucky? Like, yeah. Well, they those people will talk like that always. Uh, just to, it's fake. How it's completely fake. How stupid are the people that are there? that don't know where she was born and raised and how she talks and that's actually mocking them. Yeah, I, I, I get you, man. It's, it's ridiculous and just, uh, the torture shit is ridiculous, I think, and I'm really tired of our democracy behind it. Yeah, I don't blame it. I don't blame it. Uh, sorry for the uh, uh, barking in the background there. I've got dogs running around here. Oh, it's no problem, man. So, I was actually doing like a ton of research for my book, and I was like, dude, I, I came across so many executive orders that I went over on the last show that blew my mind, but one yeah. thing I wanted to get into greater detail on is uh, that the, the newest Bush, the youngest, the newest Bush, basically, this guy is an adopted citizen you can find it on their official like genealogy page you know what i'm saying 
And they were talking on, I believe it was Fox News, about after Jeb, how he, what is his name, like Walker or something, or like uh, that he would be a, a good president. So I look it up, and I'm like, dude, if he's Mexican, either Barbara Bush cheated on someone or whatever. Someone in the family cheated on someone because I don't see any Mexican heritage in the Bushes, okay? Yeah. Call me crazy, but I just don't see yeah. it. Yeah. Sure enough, he is adopted, and he has an adopted sister that they could roll out at any minute to watch. Yep, yep. You know? So what's your take on that? Do you think that that I ties think in? I going to try and play up any yeah. angle they can. Angle they can. Like There's like Hillary, Hillary, Hillary in there. Just kind of front of the front there. there try and play the angle with Hispanic people, too, with just, just uh, political, political correctness, man. man. It's been a pretty, pretty effective, effective weapon. weapon. I mean, really, how, how stupid are they? Are they? They managed to wrap most of the country around their finger with minimal effort. Hey, you know what? I never said they're stupid, but... One thing I will say is that they are stupid enough to leave evidence for people like us. Yeah, to yeah. Get. And maybe that's arrogance. Yeah, and it's it's pretty, pretty much arrogance. And it's time for us to take that arrogance are, and turn it into stupid. They're lacking, they're lacking of wisdom, but most of them are lacking in intelligence. But it's time to reverse it. You know what I'm saying? Take that yeah. arrogance and turn it into stupidity by holding their feet to the fire for what they say and do behind, you know, in their books and what we, agree, you agree. know what I'm saying, what we catch them on. Uh, to uh, to, uh, to, to that that here, this is, is a pretty, is a pretty uh, uh, old quote-unquote quote quote there who's never been. been. Uh, Belgian uh, former Belgian James Fabiola died in 1986. So just, uh, so just uh, royal uh, be, uh, uh, moving, moving on, on shuffling, shuffling off more spoil. spoil and shame. shame. Um, keep going. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is out of the local, the local uh, French, uh, news, French news. Uh, Al Qaeda fighters free French hostage in Mali. Hmm. Really? really? Yep. Yep. Four Al Qaeda militants were exchanged for the release of French hostage Serge Lazarevich, a government, a government minister, minister from Mali, from Mali admitted, on admitted on Friday. Wow. Man, dude, I've been behind on a lot of things because I've been so busy and sick, and with my mom being sick. I mean, I, I'm I'm glad you're catching me up on these things, brother. Yeah, yeah well, here just uh, to get into it, there, Molly admitted Friday, Friday that the prisoners, prisoners have been, been free in exchange for the uh, uh, French hostage Serge uh, Lazarevich concerning, concerning uh, confirming, confirming information given, given to AFP, AFP earlier, earlier this week uh, by, by security, security force and West African country. country. Quote, it's, it's a fact. fact. Everyone, it's fact. fact. Everyone, Everyone knows there's no need to deny that reality. The Justice uh, Minister of Muhammad Ali Masili told France 24 television in response to a question on the issue three days after Lazarevich was kidnapped by Islamic militants in Mali in 2011 was free. The 51-year-old was snatched while on a business, business trip, trip while uh, uh, with, with fellow French Frenchman Philippe uh, Verdun in a kidnapping claim by, by Al-Qaeda in the Islamic grave, AQIM. Verdun, who uh, suffered from an ulcer and tachycardia and a no normal fast heartbeat was dead last year and was shot dead last year and those close to his family he'd been executed as he was a week. Lazarevich was France's last man in hospital and questions swirled around the world around the release. Mali security story told the AFP on condition and anonymity that Bamako was freed, uh, had freed several AQIM prisoners on request from Paris. I can't tell you, or I can tell you that men, and some of uh, some may say are terrorists, are prisoners, us are prisoners, are prisoners freed in exchange, freed in exchange for, the for the French hostage, the source said. Uh, I'm in a loss. 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 I
I always if heard you were to CNN, CNN or Fox, Fox News, News or your or local or NBC or ABC or, 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 or somebody, you're, you're never, never going to know this. You're never going to hear any of that. And if and you do, it's going to be so heavily sanitized there that you're never going to understand what it is. Yeah, I actually, you know what's funny, bro, is that I actually forgot that the news was that bad. <laughs> I really did. I, for, <laughs> for a little bit, just because I, I would feel that, uh, you know, I, I was watching some older documentaries, and just the way that the news was actually investigative journalists, you know what I'm saying? They yeah, actually, but there's always been that, that certain that agenda, always. always. I agree to that, but, you know, I would say that I think that Back then, they did a hell of a lot better of a job than we did. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, we, yeah, not we, we, us, but what they're uh, doing now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, currently, what Here, we uh, is I can see that out there with, uh, the, with uh, the European uh, news. Uh, uh, Spanish firm wins $1.2 billion dollar, uh, US, uh, rail US rail contract. contract. Uh, US subsidiary uh, Spanish firm SPS is not contracted to build. Uh, part, part of the, of the first, first ever high-speed high rail line in the U.S. to stretch the traffic will eventually help connect Los, Los Angeles, Angeles and San Francisco in under three hours. They, I think they already have that, but... No, no that's, that's the... Uh, that's, that's the... Uh, uh, that's the uh, I, believe I believe it. Oh, yeah, I was just... Uh, yeah, NCS is the company that's doing the super highways, I believe. It's, uh, no, no, no. no it goes... Is the U.S. subsidiary of Spanish company ACS? There's rumors. You know, that's. I'm glad you brought that up. You know how I investigate O'Hare. Obviously, I was telling you yesterday. I actually picked some of that up. Uh, how I got chased and everything O'Hare. So mm -hmm. you should upload it to uh, to, uh, uh, YouTube. after the show. And right literally, dude, I just click. Soon as they start doing the renovation, we start having sinkholes popping up everywhere. Yeah, it makes you wonder. Yeah, and I started noticing the same equipment that I had, or I had seen, I saw on the show, and it's used for underground construction, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know what the hell they're doing there anymore, bro, but there's something. I, I For people that don't know, I had, like, literally right when I got off of the highway, I had... Area 51 type security. If you've never seen it, it's like a white, uh, you know, pickup truck with black tents. And this thing was sitting like right facing towards me in a street that runs on the inside, blocking both lanes, flashes his brights at me, and starts paralleling me. I get my camera and start blindly filming. And I happen to pick him up, you know, like I saw. Yeah. yeah. My my screen small, so I saw that I did, and then I picked up another one hiding up with no lights on or nothing like that that I didn't think was there because I saw about fifteen of these people, but not on the airport side, on the opposite yeah, yeah. side of the airport, and in right behind them there's barbed wire fence and it looked like apartments, like it was eerie. Then there's a train that was moving at about like. 30 times faster the speed of the construction trains they bring back. Yeah, yeah. So I'm lost. I, I thought it was like a military base that we we were paying for without knowing it. Yeah, well, who knows whether or not it's for us or for some European company to make the contract out. That way there's uh, less of a paper trail. I mean, they do stuff like that all the time. They invaded uh, the neighboring town and took over the that property on top of it. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, and they're suing the city. So, uh, dude, the security that is on the other side of the airport cannot be explained. And also what cannot be explained is if they weren't watching me, why did they all vanish? <laughs> you know, why, why was it all of a sudden when I had my camera, again, just like they, the guy that I have on YouTube that anyone could see that I caught in traffic, took off flying after I pulled the camera out. The camera yep. it, it scares the crap out of them. But now they're saying uh, that they're talking about passing a law here in Chicago where that's illegal and I could go to jail for just filming Amen. a police officer because of Ferguson. Well, uh, that's pretty crazy, bro. <laughs> police uh, state. I, I, don't I don't know, know how to explain it. I imagine, imagine probably it's got something to, to do with God only knows what, what, but they've got more than enough uh, property out there and 
with more than enough, enough uh, people, uh, people that aren't inquisitive, inquisitive on anything, anything that uh, yeah. would never question it. Oh, right. no. Yeah, and you know, um, <clears throat> when I got back from Ferguson, when the president gave that speech, he gave that speech like two blocks from my house. Wow. I'm not even joking. I could walk there in two minutes, man. And it was, I couldn't leave. I couldn't get out of my house. I, I could, they had this, every street block for miles and miles and miles yep. on end. They had Blackhawks or uh, Apache helicopters with guys with, with like literally assault rifles pointing around at everyone and circling. This president is a paranoid piece of shit. I am sorry. But no, no, he's, he's, not he's not really even a president anymore. He's in Obama. Obama. And, and my theory is how the hell did these people like bitching about immigration get to not get tossed? How did they not yep. get tossed? If I went in there and said, why are the borders open? And I screamed and interrupted them. They tossed me. I'm out the door. Yep. Bye-bye, Pete Wicker. You know what I'm saying? How yep. are they able to constantly hackle him, Seth? Agreed. Yeah, you know? Like, so that was a setup to make it seem like that he should be... Everybody wants immigration. immigration. Yeah, yeah, like, he's, he's being soft on immigration. immigration. And he needs to, like, actually step, step it up and make it easier for all these people. Yeah, and on top of it, uh, then what does he do? He, he says, I already have it. I've already done it. Like, setting the precedent for him to exact, you know, or act exactly. Yeah, it could be completely scot-free at the end of it. Yeah. Like, you know, it's makes it's sickening. Actually, it really is. It really is sickening. Well, keeping on with our uh, international news, we got a little bit more, and then it's going to start getting uh, domestic here. But uh, starting to see, this some you might not have heard there. Uh, violence erupts during general strike. Protests across Italy. Union say 60% turnout. Politics says government listening. Uh, into uh, oh, December 12th. More than 1.5 million members, members of trade unions and student, student organizations mounted a large show of force protest and protest all of the new premier of the government, government, government on Friday. The general strike and rally was set in the country. country. Uh, the uh, one day same strike called by two of the Italy three big trade union federations, the CDIL and the UIL, was marred by violence protests in Milan and Turin. At the same time, social housing activists clashed with police clashed and riot here near the building. Near the building in Central Rome, they had been occupied earlier by activists. Police were thrown as police were thrown as police cleared the building. Uh, the building. Uh, across the uh, country, the strike and rally was against the government and the massive destruction. The public transport services badly affected. Half of Italy's train services and flights and 70% of its buses were halted on Friday. Trade unions, PGIL, and UIL said that they at the end of the day, the union leaders said they felt strong satisfaction at the turnout and the turnout all day meant all day meant an extraordinary day and that that will need to change. Well, that's a positive sign. I wish we could do that out here. Yep. Yeah. When's the last time I think about, about that piece? Since, since literally, 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 when Bush was in office, office when was when the last time there was, there was a, 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 a gathering of a million, million people, people for peace? For, peace. for anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even though there's a damn job. Million man march. At least that. Million man march. Yeah, and even then, most of the million man march not even a million damn people there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's I mean, no count as far as it was to be the biggest thing of all time. Maybe had 100,000 people, like, like they were saying, saying there, was there was far more than 100,000 people. people. I, really, I, really, I really doubt it. They could use the camera angle and they made a scene. Like, like, there were really a thin camera angle to make it look like there's more people here than there really are. But at the same time, with as much money and as much time that they put into that picking that thing for, like, months beforehand, You'd have figured that actually millions of people would have turned out. Yeah, and uh, are you saying that that was done by the African American leaders or by the government? What? what? The climate climate climate? No, the the basically the exaggeration of the numbers. Oh, oh, the million, million man march at one point. I'm sure they have a million. Oh, I thought you were saying. I thought yeah, you were talking about the climate march. march but I'm, oh, okay. I thought you were saying because I was going to say I'm sure they didn't count, but I don't know about that. You know, like yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you basically to clarify that. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. sure. Uh, but, uh, uh, this is uh, out of CuriaDailyNews.com. Uh, 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 this is a Turkish news. Uzbek dissident assassinated in Istanbul. One arrested. Uh, as Uzbek, an Uzbek dissident was living in Turkey for around 12 years, assassinated by Istanbul 
uh, in Istanbul, Dick and Bernou district on December 11, with a confession with the origin of Russian national being detained as a sole suspect. Istanbul anti terror teams captured, captured the suspect, identified only by the initial CN after examining the security camera footage and taking witness testimonies regarding the incident. Abdullah Bukhari, 38, was working as a religious leader and the head of the Isan Learning Services and Solidarity Association in Zaytun Bernu district of the city. The Uzbek dissident was wounded in a gun attack at close range in front of the association building. Uh, Bukhari has eventually received death threats from Russian and Uzbek intelligence agencies and reportedly brought a steel vest whenever he went outside. He was attacked at a time when he was not wearing a steel vest, but uh, while he was also reportedly did not inform any students of the association that he was going to the building. Wow. Heavy, huh? Yeah, it is, man. Like, I feel like I, I missed out on, like, a year's worth of uh, news, actually. Oh, man, if you do an international news like, like we do, we do it, uh, uh, there's, there's never a shortage of it. Hey, hey we, have, uh, we have a caller. I wonder if we could take the caller uh, as well as keep yourself here. Let's see. Okay. Hello? Hey, Pete. You're live on air with Pete Wickard. This is the truth of Stranger Than Fiction. Um, what? You're live on air with Pete and Seth Davis. That's great. Um, <laughs> basically, I, I'm assuming Hello? that uh, you, um, what you would call it, did not mean to uh, call while I was on air. Hello? Hi, nobody's figured this is called, but if you lose your name number. Hello? Call me. All right, so, Seth, call me back. Call me. So, basically, uh, I thought uh, we had a caller, but uh, that was a... A lady friend of mine, if you're watching, hi. Suspect, I thought we had a caller, and uh, I, ca I can't do uh, where both of us are on, so I apologize. Wow. That was a lady friend of mine. Uh, I'd like to say hi and thank you for your support. <laughs> I'll call you when the show is over. But uh, sorry about that. Uh, we were actually, that was a good test and a way to see what we could do in the future with that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, here, continue. Uh, here, I'm going to try to beat her up here as we go along. Uh, uh, inspired in Israeli Israel 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 Uh This is out of B. Kathimi Murray. Murray. Oh, I'm not even going to try. B. Kathimi Murray is investigating a free gun drive-by gun or attack on the Israeli embassy in Athens, which caused no injuries or damage. Wow. No, no injuries or damage. Yeah. This needs to be in the Guinness Book of World Records, bro. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jay, this is uh, out of out Irish Times, Times is an American, American story, story there or whatever, but, but uh, the U.S. Congress authorized, authorized $577 billion in defense spending. Will fund an American training for Iraq and Syrian forces fighting Islamic State rebels. My question is, how is defense? Related to funding Iraqi and Syrian forces fighting allegedly Islamic State rebels. Five hundred seventy-seven billion dollars, including sixty-four billion dollars for war abroad. Wow. Uh, that's a good question, Seth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, what's your take? Personally, I think, I think that it's War Machine keeps, war machine keeps on turning. It shows, shows that regardless, regardless of whether, whether or not you have a Democratic, Democratic or a Republican, Republican majority, the bombs will drop the same. That, well, well, damn said, brother. And actually, people, you need to wake up to that false paradigm for real. Because if you haven't seen it with Bush and Obama being the same, I don't know what will wake you up, but... We need that. Oh, yeah, because yeah, if you can get past from, from Bush, Bush Sr. Senior to, to, to Bill Clinton and then not see it from Bill Clinton to Bush Jr. and not see it from Bush Jr. to Obama, 
Like, but I, I really, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, man. I know more about people that are critically thinking human beings or who I used to think were critically thinking human beings. <laughs> That uh, completely thought uh, the Mitt Romney or Tom McCain would do that. Uh, the, the Even yeah. Oliver Stone, who I respect greatly, you know, he uh, he was acting like if Al Gore won. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and that really is like really Al Gore. Gore. Like, mm -hmm. dude, what world are you in, bro? I mean, like, yeah. I, yeah. sure, not, Gore, or not, not, you know, like a multi-generational uh, uh, senator, uh, there. senator there. That, that is, is, is more core I mean, I mean he's, he's really not rich and not rich, like a good thing. Just got a lot of the human being. Of the human human being. being. <laughs> Dude, uh, I'm trying to put my sponsor into the show. I promised him I would. So I'm having problems. Mm -hmm. So I apologize, audience, for sometimes just zoning off. I'm about to give it to Seth Dave as soon as I try to put this right here. But promo code Pete. Greatest expe expectations as a company that should be uh, should be sufficient there. <laughs> but yeah, um, good. Uh, uh, can you on how we're gonna get to uh, right here? here. Uh, attorney uh, just attorneys at indies.com. Attorney general, attorney general wants New York to, 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 to reveal his source. source. Uh, attorney, uh, attorney, attorney general Holder, Holder has decided against forcing reporters for the New York Times to admit that they have been hunting for according to the senior justice department official. The reporter, James Ryzen, has been battling for years to stop prosecutors from forcing him to name his sources for a book that revealed the CIA had a free of the Sabbath Hour's Young's Nuclear Weapons Program. This, and it, 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 it goes on, this is one thing that I would like to uh, clarify there, and just, and just bring up. If you were out with something there, or anybody, anybody really, that was actually controversial and went against what Obama or what Eric Holder or somebody wanted, they would force you, period, to reveal your source, or would send you to prison. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's the like best case, or one of those, you know, jails, they don't know where they're taking you, they don't yeah, exactly. Out. exactly. They, they can't, can't to stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My, My thing, thing here, here is, is that, that they would they allow, allow this to be okay, okay because it's an, uh, a book about the CIA's effort to uh, sabotage the Iran's nuclear weapons, weapons program, program, insisting A, what they've said the entire time, time that the Iran's nuclear weapons, weapons program, program, even though they said they, they, don't, they don't, and B, and B that they tried to sabotage and that it was successful, that, that they have nuclear weapons now. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we all can, can be scared. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. So Iran was detonated, detonated, detonated uh, over a thousand nuclear weapons. weapons. You know, I dude, they're trying to make it seem like for the last twenty years that Iran was going to have like this dangerous nuclear program, and they still can't even figure out how to use it for power. People, like, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, look at it. Look Iran, Iran, Iran got what? Zero, zero nuclear, nuclear weapons, weapons ever exploded, exploded, exploded as far as, as we know. The United States that has blown up over its power. Yeah, over a thousand. Well, One country, country of like the two thousand nuclear bombs that have been exploded since Batman, Batman and Little Boy were the original uh, test in Sapporo, New Mexico. Mexico. Well said. Well said. Disgusting. Uh, uh, and, and that's why Area Fifty One that brings up a thought is a lot of people think it's abandoned. You know why? Yeah. Because basically. Uh, it's so toxic <laughs> that you can't really live there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, that's true. It really can at this at this stage. So I wonder if uh, they didn't move things along more towards where they have like the the you know the command in Co like Colorado area, Colorado Springs, yeah, or, agree, agree, White agree, agree. Sand, something something like that. You know, I really really here's, here's something, something that, that uh, will, will definitely, definitely creep you out, you out there, there Pete. Pete. This, this is, is uh, out of the rundownlive.com. This is an article by Kristan T. Harris, uh, co-host of Rundown Live. Pretty dang good show. You guys can check it out there. I've been on it. Yeah, pretty dang good episode. Check it out. And there, yeah, I love that, dude. I love being on their show. Now I'd love to go on again and have them come on. So check them out. This this article is robots and retail sales floor in San Jose. Meet Oshbot, your new retail sales. Salesman. Recently created by Lowe's Innovation Labs to be your new sales person. The Android will approach customers and ask qualifying questions and has the ability to communicate with multiple
multiple languages. If an item is not in stock or a resolution cannot be reached, the droid can't contact and can't guess other droids human have in other locations across the globe. Throughout the night, the machine will take inventory and map the retail location in 3D. This allows the robot to know where every item is stored located and compare the droid to the AI ship. This will also save the company a considerable amount of money. Humans take smoke breaks, lunch breaks, require health care, 401k vacations, lawsuits, cost of shrink, and sometimes they're unreliable. Uh, but, but those, those are, are these Android first personable. One employee is launching a uh, uh, launching supply, supply hardware store, store in San Jose and described his droid experience as making a friend with the Android. I actually really liked it. We could be considered friends. Oh, great. Uh, yeah. yeah. See, this is uh, what scares me. If you, if want, you want to check, check it out, see what it uh, looks, looks like. Go to the two reviews, and it is, I believe, the one, two, three, four. Uh, uh, seven down from the, from the top. top. All right, I'll check that out. It's, it's pretty, pretty creepy, creepy looking, man. Keep going, give me, uh, keep going on the it looks, like a, it looks like a giant uh, dehumidifier. I'm gonna get to that. You're okay. And uh, uh, still from here, uh, truestreammedia.com. A century ago, uh, Rockefeller funded the Eugenic Initiative to sterilize 15 million Americans. This is this is by, uh, what was Aaron Dyson, uh, Dyson and Melissa Mahoney. What, what, what was the first part of that? What was the first part of that? A century ago, hundred years ago, Rockefeller funded the Eugenic Initiative to sterilize 15 million, sterilize 15 million Americans. They made movies about that, people. Like, uh, yep. Yep. what was that one really good one that Alex used in Endgame? If you really want uh, to I can't remember the exact name of it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, if, if you want to get a good idea about that, you know what I'm saying? That's a, you yeah, can watch it. Yeah, uh, you, this goes back a while with the inbreeding, but they're talking about com like literally judging the genetic 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 programs. Uh, it, just yeah, to start with uh, some, some people are still under the impression that the Rockefeller Foundation is all about philanthropy and helping people and saving lives. lives. Those people are Bill Gates and uh, and uh, was Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. Uh, in reality, the Rockefellers have been uh, one of the largest financial backers and drivers of the genetic depopulation agenda for over a century now. Check out these 1915 uh, newspaper clippings that came across during research. First is from the Salem Daily Capital Journal, printed Thursday, November 4th, 1915. Uh, this is Rockefeller Jr. on eugenics problem. Concerning the new eugenic play, The Unborn, pronounced, uh, produced in New York today by physicians and philanthropists, John B. Rockefeller said, for the first time in dramatic uh, history, the perplexing problem of the limitation of undesirable offspring, which has been engaged, uh, which has been engaging the attention of thoughtful eugenicists and sociologists the world over, is dealt with on the stage in the play that we are uh, to produce. The right of a child to be well born and the right of a wife to decide about it are problems the solution of which society can no longer ignore. Wow. Wow. That's what, that was well worded. Well, yep. Pretty, pretty creepy. creepy. Uh, this uh, is what the propaganda looked like before we had television. The Rockefeller's funding a stage play to push the eugenics depopulation agenda all the way back in 1915. But wait, I'm sounds like a modern day birth control of women's rights, too, doesn't it? Two things with the Rockefellers are also the massive financial backers and drivers uh, for, uh, of for over decades, or for decades now. Well, it's not. The key words here are undesirable, which in this old context means something a lot different than, quote, well-born, the right of the child to be well-born. Just a few months earlier, the Rockefellers also wrote an open article about new eugenics enterprise printed in newspapers across the country like this one in the Washington Herald, September 3rd, 1915. This is 15 uh, million Americans effective, they say. A uh, gigantic uh, eugenic, uh, eugenic enterprise organized for sterilization of unfit of nation. New York, New York uh, 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 Mrs. Uh, e. H. Harriman, uh, or, this, uh, or uh, uh, F. Avril Harriman, I believe, uh, 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 of F. Avril Harriman, his wife, uh, 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 Gigantic Eugenic gigantic Enterprise of Cold Springs Cold Harbor, Long Island, Island to ascertain uh, what uh, is the matter, matter with the human race. Launched a campaign, campaign today for the sterilization, sterilization of 15 million, million Americans. 
coincident with this amazing with statement this amazing comes the announcement of the Japan and Eugenics Society, which will have at its disposal the vast fortune of Ms. Harriman, liberal John B. Rockefeller, and Andrew Carnegie, and scientific aid from Alexander Graham Hill and the greatest health of scientists ever joined in a great undertaking. Four years before the year, we preliminary work to conduct not only at Cold Stone's Harbor, but by field workers all over the world. The board, which were our direction of the work, uh, consists of the following famous men, Alexander John Banner, and Ben Elton, scientists and scientists, chairman Dr. W. N. Welch, pathologist John Hopkins, John Hopkins, Vice uh, uh, Chairman L. L. Parker, or, uh, Dr. L. L. Parker, uh, John Hopkins, uh, President of the National Commission of Hygiene, Dr. T. H. Morgan, Sociologist of New York, Irving Fisher, Professor of Political Economy at Yale, and Dr. E. E. Southard, the Pathologist of Boston. Uh, Secretary of the Board and Resident Director is Dr. Dr. Charles H. H. Davenport, the New York Biologist, H.H. Lachman, the Superintendent, and uh, Professor Howard J. Banker, a noted botanist of DePaul University, has been installed as scientific expert. The organization, after its four years of work in this country, in Europe reached the conclusion that sterilization of defective was the greatest work for them. Yeah. Statistics yeah. gathered yeah. reveal the amazing yeah. fact that 10% of the uh, present population in the United States are defective, and who yeah. must be blotted out as blotted out as reproducers of human life. Yeah, they would look at your genealogy, and basically, if you had one like mentally challenged uh, person in your family, they would sterilize you. Oh, and I was wrong. That's so it's uh, E. H. Harriman's uh, wife. Was uh, F. Avril Harriman's uh, my mother. Okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> and, and it goes on. And actually, it's a great article. I would really recommend people go, go read, it, read it and look at that because, because it's pretty, pretty interesting, interesting stuff. stuff. You'd be surprised what you can see in old newspapers as far as stuff that's just admitted. Admitted because I mean, I mean who cares? Who cares? That was a hundred years ago. ago. That's, that's old, old news, news, man. man. Like, you know, bring it up in the past. Well, because it's replaying right now, and now they have full control of the healthcare system. Imagine what they could do with that. Well said. Well said. Uh, before we get to uh, info we words, we've got one last one here, and here, and then we'll do three more articles, more articles and then I'm, uh, I'm with, with it for the evening there. there uh, uh, Thomas Sub explores uh, the depth depths on its own. out of gizmag.com, uh, December 12th, uh, by Bonnie Foxworth. Although it's tempting to refer to people uh, the vehicle in the photo above as an auto vehicle, a remote operating vehicle, the whole uh, idea behind it is that it doesn't require a freight. Created by a team of Japan's Okayama University, an MOS AUV, a move-on sensing autonomous underwater vehicle, is designed to find its own way along the bottom of the sea or air, performing various tasks as it does so. Wow. The other craft's move-on sensing system uh, combines 3D stereoscopic computer vision with conventional sonar technology. According to the university's professor, Mamoru Minami, this combination allows it to search, track, and pinpoint underwater objects within an accuracy of 5 millimeters, although it hopes to reproduce that figure to 0.5 or reduce that figure to 0.5 millimeters. Oh, wow. Great. That, yeah. that, remi yeah. that reminds me of like the Batman mo movie. Yep. How... Oh. Yep. They got the the Dark Knight Rises, how they got that UFO like thing. You're mm -hmm. telling me that if the concepts in a movie that's not really been developed, people. I'm telling you, they got some mm -hmm. stuff and, that uh, makes that so uh, Go in info here. Wars. We got info really, wars. We got really good articles there to finish really up good for the evening from uh, Kurt Nemo. We got Kurt Nemo. Uh, university got president. University all president. white people are racist. All white people all are racist. Folks benefit white folks benefit from <laughs> significant <laughs> unearned <laughs> privilege. Uh, this is uh, the uh, Jane, Jane Connolly, president, president of one of the largest public universities in the United, United States, States, believes white people, people are inherently racist and born with significant unearned privilege. On December 5th, 
Donnelly, Donnelly who is white, white for the California the State University, 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 University of Long Beach, Beach website, white skin color and high income, color and high income levels, levels may attract significant honor and privilege. This privilege can manifest itself in numerous ways in the form of automatic trust, deference, and uh, security. And, uh, security. Those who are those less affluent with purpose skin or from other cultures can be targeted from micro to macro aggression, distrust, and low expectations for behavior. My God, was that not like the most disgusting? Correctly, correct way of saying that. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and actually, it's discussing no matter oh, how. You see, you talk about it's, it's, uh, it's one, one of the top, top stories on uh, the two real news that are number ten and number eleven. Uh, you, uh, you can, can see this lady. lady. It's, it's like the lady that was talking to a big there. It's the evil white media. It's like you're white lady. Shut up. Yeah. Right. Here we go. I'm, I'm there right now. I just seen the the robot machines too. That's pretty. Yeah, creepy. pretty creepy, huh? Yeah. Looks like a demon like fire, from fire from hell. Yeah. All white people. Let's see. I just saw a university. It's this like grandma looking lady. Yeah. University yep. president. All white people are racist. White folks benefit from significant unnamed privilege. Well, guess what? Um. Actually, last time I checked, the the white they people like, like shit, just like anybody else. <laughs> we don't have affirmative action, okay? Like to to so basically, now that we found out they're giving incentives to hire um, illegals, and there's affirmative yeah. action, which you know at the time I believe should was right, you know, to do, but there's nothing to guarantee, uh, you know, white people jobs, but yeah, or a man. Yeah. Unless you're not white. If you're a white man, you really are like just kind of a shit poop kind of battle. Yeah. And but, like, you know, it's your white privilege that you get in exchange for that. Because, because the cops don't mess with you or I because we're white, right? right? I mean, we can just I mean, park can anywhere, just always park anywhere, always kill the cops, and we want to you know, use you know, instant it's credit, credit. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's great. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, I'm sure. I just don't borrow just money borrow from my from other rich white acquaintances whenever I'd like. Whenever I'd like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what they act like, man. They don't realize, like, we're trying to, <laughs> you know, like, we're, we're broke as hell, people, you know, like, that's why we're doing the show like we're doing it now, and honest to God, if we had the money to invest in a, a business, like, and turn it into, like, an InfoWars, like, Operation We would do it. That's how passionate we are. But I oh, can't yeah. get hired at Walmart. I have two college degrees. You know, like yeah, I think that's partially because of doing the show and stuff too, because they, they do, do look at stuff, stuff like that. I, I think so, because I never had a problem getting a job until I, until I started the show. So, uh, yeah, continuing, continuing on, on here, this is from uh, Steve Watson. Watson uh, uh, in uh, 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 to incite meeting by pulling gun on half day. I can't breathe. Protesters. There's been demonstrators. Those officers are in standoff. You can probably see the picture of this. It's one of the other top stories on two real news. Number five, number six in the top. Uh, uh, an undercover uh, cop in Brooklyn pulled out a gun and pointed at protesters Wednesday night after they exposed him and the partner of the police officer who was attempting to recite crime. Uh, the shocking moment uh, was captured by Reuters by Reuters by Noah Berger, uh, who was coming out of protest by the Michael Brown and Eric Garner cases. He just literally, literally is one of the most ridiculous looking white guys you could possibly have out there. This is a protest in Oakland that you know is specifically going to be mainly black people. And you send this goofy ass looking white guy out here with his, uh, uh, with his whatever uh, vest, whatever hood vest he's got and hood and there was cowboy and there was cowboy boots and just pulls out his gun and starts pointing at him, knowing full well, well that he's going to start something. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I, dude, uh, I'm telling you right now, this world is going crazy, and the truth is stranger than fiction. Truth is stranger than fiction. Say that for our last story here in the I think it's nice to give a shout out to the author of this last article here, that's Michael Phelan. Oh boy. Police, armored military vehicles and constitutionalists with firearms. Quote, we've got a lot of constitutionalists, a lot of people with shock file weapons. Shocking video provided exclusively to InfoWarn says a Washington State Sheriff's Deputy proclaiming that law enforcement officers need armored military vehicles because of, quote, constitutionalists. 
violence with firearms. Footage recently captured in Spokane Valley begins with a local resident asking two deputies why police would need vehicles specifically designed for warfare abroad. I mean, well, I mean, we've got a lot of constitutional and a lot of people with uh, weapons, weapons and ammunition. And that means, uh, they have lots of weapons, lots of weapons here locally. Weapons here locally. Startling admission not only points to active surveillance of legal gun owners, but of those who support the country's founding document, further solidifying concerns among the law-abiding citizens that police are receiving military equipment and training in order to target conservative Americans. The deputy's specific mention of constitutionalists, a broad term covering millions of Americans, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to criminals in general, also indicates a clear training mindset that the FBI and Homeland security, 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 two groups which have absurdly labeled, quote, liberty lovers as terror threats. Such clear talking points are unsurprising given the Franklin County Sheriff's Sheriff's training from the Southern Poverty Law Center, a group that ludicrously compares the United States of Americans to racist hate groups. InfoWars was unable to reach the Spokane County Sheriff's Office to comment on the publishing. The police speak to Spokane Valley Republican Representative Matthew Shea, who was appalled and presented with the footage, who let me hopefully just say there that Shea made a pretty much a McDonald's style Republican also. Oh, well, mainline you know, Republican. Who I guarantee, who I guarantee you are probably, you probably aware, of aware of this information long before and before and 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 before and 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 before 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 yeah, he was the guy that uh, wrote Obamacare, Obamacare before Obamacare. Obamacare. Yeah. And it, except the people have the idea, oh, no, it was good before Obama got a hold of it, or vice versa. It, it, it ever started, started as anything that was ever, ever not a giant scam to defraud as many people as possible and force them uh, through sensitive factors into, into purchasing a, a certain kind of insurance from a certain kind of uh, provider. Yeah, you're right. Damn right. That happened to bankroll the entire writing of the bill itself. Wow. So that was that was a pretty damn bombshell last uh, breaking news story there. We have uh, we have a clip. So how do you want to do this? Uh, you you got to get going, or you want to play? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I will leave it up to you. If you, you want to back after the uh, end of the clip there, there and wrap up the show or whatnot? As you know what? If, how about we could just have uh, Salente wrap it up, so I'm, I don't hold you up. You, do you know, so basically, thanks. You know, for coming on. You know, uh, thank you for having me. Man. No problem, man. We're gonna be doing some more of this, and you know, and uh, we're working out some kinks. And supposedly, uh, the new studio. I apologize for not being there yet. <laughs> you know, I don't want to seem like a liar. That it's not on me. Uh, if it was up to me, we would have been in there like a month ago. But what happened is the the gas, electric, the zoning permits, all sorts of hoops and yeah, we're working with what we got right now too. Also, to cut down on costs. Yeah, yeah. So in order to get this information that Seth is, you know, done, I wasn't able to go to the studio today because they're doing an MMA fight to raise money. So basically, we are that dedicated that that did not stop us. Most people would think, oh, it's a Saturday night. You know what? We could go party. We don't have to, to go to work. No. We find a way to bring you this information. Damn straight. <laughs> but, yeah, so, Seth, thanks for, you know, tuning in, man. Thanks for joining us again. And let's make God this. Thank you for listening to us for tuning in and uh, sticking with it. And uh, thank you for having our program. program there. Keep getting on. We'll be yeah, touch. yeah, and I was going to say, um, you know, let's uh, do the Truth Alliance nightly uh, news tomorrow. Uh, sure. Let's try it. Because I, I, I had... Uh, so much stuff to do that I literally have like eight to ten stories I want to get into myself. So I, I figure let's do it tomorrow. I just, you know, I have I, we had a power outage right before here, so I had little time to prepare. So I'd like to, you know, offer if you're available, maybe about my time, seven o'clock or something. Sounds good. All right. Well, to end the show, uh, we're going to pass along to Gerald. I'm going I'm to let, let go of Seth right now. See, Peace, <laughs> yeah, brother. Thanks, Seth, man. And it was great talking to you, man. And um, God bless you and your family. And I'm praying for you. God bless you. All right, good evening. Bye-bye.
All right. And now to end the show, we're going to play a clip from Gerald Salente. Uh, and yes, this is how we do it. When you can't go into the studio, you got to make some adjustments. And at least you get the video format now. Prior, you did it. Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti, Tuesday, December 9th, 2014. And here are some of today's trends in the news. What a weekend we had over here in Colonial Kingston at the launching of the 2015 Top Trends Conference. And what a great group of people. Whew. Every one of them, the conferences that we have, the people, like-minded people, everybody respectful and very knowledgeable. And you'll be able to see it all. Gave a little bit of misinformation. Yes, we said that the video would be four hours. It's over five hours. And a special rate to Trends Journal subscribers. I suggest you consider seeing history before it happens as well as reading it because as promised today we launched our synopsis of the top trends of 2015 there's going to be more to come we're going to fill it out a lot more in the winter edition but this will give you a jump on the future like no one else is getting and again, the conference was a huge success, wonderful people, wonderful ideas, and great energy. So, the video will be out sometime tomorrow, finishing up all the finishing touches right now, and it'll be ready for your viewing. On to the news, a big day in the markets, Whew, over there in Asia, eh, I wasn't so happy, not a Shanghai index down over five percent yeah that's china yeah, i wonder why well we'll look and see why oh here it is chinese imports weaken chinese imports fell the most in eight months in november exports still grew but at the slowest rate in six months that's called a recovery yeah it's also called lowering interest rates 40 basis points you remember and now all the markets shot up on that news that followed the other good news of abenomics another round oh you forgot that one uh here's a little live for you to digest just another bunch of slimy people from a slimy government near you because remember what one of the top trends is yeah Grand manipulation. The SOBs are always lying to us. Well, I shouldn't say lie. I should say um, misleading. That's more appropriate because we have to be appropriate because people don't like when you call bastards bastards and liars liars. So here's a little lie for you. A nice setup to juice the markets beforehand. But now, hey, that all the juice is running out. We can let it loose. Japan's recession worse than first reported. GDP revised downward, putting efforts to boost growth in doubt. Oh, it's only here on page four. Doesn't make much of the American news. The recession that struck Japan after a tax increase in April was deeper than first reported, the government said yesterday. That goes on. A bunch of lying. Yes, yes. And speaking about more financial problems coming to a country near you, front page story, strong dollar and falling oil prices batter emerging currencies. Huh. Try it. Why is the dollar so strong? Oh, it's those great retails. Oh, no, that wasn't it. Oh, the great housing. No, that's not it either. No. And those auto sales are up, but hey, you could buy a car with, just like you could buy a house back in the old days. Don't need any credit rating. Don't even need a job. 
So, remember, recession, depression, currency wars, trade wars. Hey, exports down. Uh, yeah, lower the value of that currency. That'll get them exports up. Oh, yeah. Trade wars, world wars. Emerging market currencies fell for their lowest level in 14 years, hampered by a strengthening dollar and falling oil prices that are at five-year lows. And remember, you as Trends Journal subscribers have been on top of this trend and ahead of the news since June. So, the stronger dollar put further pressure on the price of crude, which dropped 4%. That was on Monday to $65 a barrel. Yep. And gold. Whoop, shoot. Up over 35 bucks. I wonder why. I'll tell you why. Because things don't look so good out there. Bad economy and the war talk keeps heating up. Emerging markets have been hit by the relentless rise in the dollar, weaker exports due to slower growth in China, and lower commodity prices, which have hurt natural resource exporters such as Russia, Nigeria, and Mexico. And for the record, as we've been saying, when Americans and Europeans don't buy a lot of stuff, the Chinese don't make. Very old news. And don't forget about Brazil. Hey, how about Australia? Oh, yeah. Their currency's doing great, isn't it? Nope. Hey, how about that loony up there from the lunatic hoppers country? Yeah, Canada. Not doing so great on exports, natural resources. Hey, Chile, wonderful day over there. Getting kind of cold, that economy, isn't it? You heard it first. You can see where it's going. And another little story here worth interest in the Financial Times. German economic jibes feed anti-EU sentiment warns French finance chief. French finance minister has called on the German establishment to watch its words when criticizing his country's economic policies, saying that Germany is feeling the rise of anti-EU populists. Don't be a populist. Be an establishment slave. Don't be a populist. Following the crooks. Buy into the liars. A populist. Yeah, we don't want any more people coming into the country. We can't take care of our own. No, we don't want to be in the EU because our economy sucks. That's right. Recession's running rampant. Oh, little note, little note. Not very important. Hey, remember all the lies coming out about how wonderful things are going over there in Greece? That market was down a yeah, little down today. 11% in one day. Shanghai down 5%. Put it together. Where are we going? Heaven. Oh, it's a heavenly market. Don't forget to invest because where are you going to put your dough? Oh, can't put it nowhere. Why? Low interest rates. Got to keep the Ponzi scheme going. Ah, talking about them interest rates. A little story right here in the Wall Street Journal. Fed aims to signal shift on low rates. Federal Reserve official assholes are seriously considering. Oh, they're seriously considering. Let's get serious. How could people believe these people? These, these traitors. The Federal Reserve is a private bank that is destroy this country and a country near you are considering an important shift in tone let's change our tone i have to change my tone i get letters reprimanding me on my tone i should take a federal reserve tone yeah bullshit you like bullshit when it's laid out nice don't raise your voice do bullshit quietly this way the people could digest it easily Bullshit goes down as easy as those 32-ounce phosphorescent Slurpees that I see people chugging down as they're walking. Dropping insurances that short-term interest rates will stay near zero for a considerable time as they look more confidently toward rate increases around the middle of next year. Okay, 
That's like six months away. Hey, dollar strong now? The dollar is only strong because all these other currencies are weak. So as the dollar gets stronger, hey, Obama the liar. Remember you said you were going to double exports? Ain't going to happen with a raising dollar. No, and you're way off already. The liar in chief, another fraudulent statement made by the con man that follows the other con men before him. And just to see how rosy things are going, Bank for Financial Settlements points to increase financial fragility. You see, I have to use the proper words. Fragility is a nice word rather than saying this thing's going down the crapper. And when you put the other pieces together, rising inequality significantly curbs growth. That's only according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Very simple formula. As more people make a lot less, the economy goes down. But that's okay because, hey, those 85 cats that own half of all of the wealth in the world compared to the other 3.5 billion, you think that's a problem? Nah. The biggest factor for impact of inequality on growth is the gap between lower income households and the rest of the population, said the OECD. And it goes on, man. Not nine percentage points off growth in the UK between 1990 and 2010. Some seven percentage points off growth in the US. You have an income inequality level not seen since the great days of the robber barons. And just to see how swimmingly things are going, a uh, little story here of minor interest. Skyscraper is latest deal for Chinese. Yep. It's bought a new building over there in New York. It's Seven Bryant Pop Tower. Yeah, great. And you know how they're doing this, by the way. For instance, the bank. This is the Chinese bank, the government, the commie government. They're good commies. We were taught to hate those bad commies, like them Russian commies. But Chinese commies, they nice because they got dough. And we're doing business with them. $4 billion to help finance Chinese firms, including the uh, buying out of Smithfield Foods. Don't forget to eat that pork. Yeah, that American pork brought to you by China with them pigs floating down the Yangtze River. Yep, a sellout. A sellout. I want to make this clear. Here's another story. White House and GOP class over torture report. Yeah, the GOP doesn't like it when it comes out, and the White House tries to cover it up. And here's what they say. Senate torture report condemns CIA interrogation program. A scathing report released by the Senate Intelligence Committee on Tuesday found that the CIA routinely misled the White House. All right, I'm not going to go on with this thing. Misled? How about lied? Could anyone say lie? No. Misdeeds, misled, misinterpret. It's disgusting. I want to make this clear. The CIA, all that they've done, report after report, CIA report, shows brutal post 9-11 interrogations, failed to secure information that foiled any threats. They rob us of our rights. They torture us. They steal our money. They take us to war. I want to make this clear. I want to make this crystal clear. Obama, Clinton, the NSA, the CIA, Bush, Cheney, yeah, the lover of that enhanced interrogation techniques. Robert Rubin, the guy that stole all our dough and gave it to the banks and they repealed the Glass-Steagall Act. Bill Clinton with NAFTA. On and on. All these wars that they started. All of these agencies, each one of them are traitors. They are traitors to America. They rob us of our constitutional rights. 
They rob us of our civil rights. They rob us of our bill of rights. Everyone, and we're going to change the law, man. I'm going to tell you, we're going to change the law. Don't you know who I am? I'm a psychopath in chief. I'm a sociopath running an agency. They are traitors to everything this country was founded upon. And they are a disgrace to our founding fathers and the founding principles of this nation. And I don't want to hear all the things that were wrong with the country because there were a lot of great things about it. As I said, my blood is Italian, but my heart is American. I couldn't be me if I was born anywhere else. So I'm saying this because in the new top trends of 2015, we don't only point out the problems. We provide solutions. Look it up. Click onto the conference, see the whole avenue of trends we follow and solutions that we suggest and alternatives that we provide. From new energy to war weary, to the elderly, to retrograde, one after another. We want a future of joy, of beauty, of inspiration and enlightenment, not entanglement. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News. All right, and this is Pete Wickard, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, the truth is stranger than fiction, and I might be back in a little while with Telly Blackwood. Uh, from you know Bam Margera show at what known as Leatherface. So stay tuned for possibly the second edition of the Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you.